Once we've got the data into our application and designed our screens for our users, we can begin to leverage automations to increase our speed and improve our workflow. Let's have a look at what I mean. When you first come to the Automate tab, if you have no other automations, there'll be a big blue button that you can click that will say Create New Automation. Clicking that button is equivalent to clicking this plus sign up here. When we have an automation, the first thing we'll do is name it. Let's name ours Row Created. And we'll add a trigger. There's six triggers to choose from. Row Created, Updated, or Deleted. We can also trigger an automation by a webhook when we've received some data, by an app action, some action within our application that we're ready and waiting for, or by some cron trigger, some time elapsed expression. Let's click row created and continue. We now need to say which table we're going to listen to, which table we will monitor and trigger this automation when a new row has been added. For now, I'll choose appointments. I'll click the plus down below to say what I want to do when this row has been created, when this new record has been added. I'm going to send an email. Now, to be able to do this, you'll need to set up email for your BuddyBase instance, which is covered in the video in the next section of this course. I can decide whether I want to use static values or dynamic values for each of these. I'll statically send this to test at kevincunningham.co.uk and I'll send it from test at buddybase.com and I'll set the subject to new appointment created. For this one, I'm going to press the little lightning bolt to the right here, which will allow me to set a dynamic value using bindings or JavaScript. I'm able to get the details of the row that triggered this automation as part of the binding and use that. I can say, hey, with a new line with a BR, you have a new appointment at, and I'll click on the trigger row, and I know this has a date property on it. It also has a reason property, so I'll do another BR, and I'll say the reason for the appointment is, and again, I'll click on the trigger.row and access the reason property another BR and have fun. At this point, I've got some options. I could add another step in my workflow. So as well as sending an email, I might trigger a Zapier Zap to be able to create a calendar event, or I might send a Slack message or any number of combined events to be able to make this automation work for me. For now, I'll stick to a single event and I'll click finish and test automation. And it's now asking me what my test data is. So I'll add something to the appointments table. I'll set the date and I'll give a reason, say sore toe, and we'll test that. On the right hand side, I can see that the row was created successfully and the email was sent. I can see the success. And I can look at the output and the input for each step. I can see the actual row details here and I can see the output from the step here. We now need to check our email and confirm it was sent and received in the way we wanted it to be. So here's the email. We can see that the email from address is correct. We can see that the text is correct and it's using the test data that we created. The email has arrived and our test user has got it. We've proved and tested that this is true. Now for any automation, once you've created and tested, you will need to deploy your application. You need to republish the next version in order for the latest automations to be activated and live. So I'll publish my application. I'll go into my application and I'll create a new appointment. I'll add a date for my appointment. And the reason I'll give is automated problems and I'll save that. It says row is saved. And at this point, my user can go on using the application, either adding new appointments or viewing existing ones, updating or deleting them. If I go to my email now, I can see that the new email has indeed been sent and received with the updated date and the updated reason. When we're building automations, we have a wide range of triggers and steps that we can use in order to build our workflows. We've looked at just one example, in the next few videos, we'll look at some more.